China has attracted a lot of international interest in recent times. I don't know if you've seen the latest issue of The Economist, but here are my cousin, the Vikings, the next supermodel. And that interest is, of course, partly due to the fact that our economy is performing relatively well, despite a protracted global recession, and partly due to the fact that we have organized our welfare system in a fairly unique way. Those two topics are, of course, interrelated, even if the connection between them is somewhat complicated. All Western countries wrestle with the issue of the best way to organize a welfare system that is subject to increasing pressure, uh, as members of the population live longer than ever before. But the primary focus of such a discussion, as we have had today, is normally pecuniary in nature. How do we finance the age boom? But there is also another question that I think is just as pressing, but much less discussed, and that involves not only the issue of how much welfare we can receive for our taxes, but rather the question of what type of welfare that we can expect in the future. As early as in the 1960s, a Swedish social democratic prime minister warned of the discontent of rising expectations in conjunction with the expansion of the welfare system. And you might as well say that history proved him right. These days, people place increasingly stringent demands on accessibility, quality, and co-determination. And, it should be added, all this at a lower cost, as the appetite for further tax hikes in countries with comprehensive welfare states is normally quite limited. 